um, my final my final student project won uh, ASL award at that year. It's called Climate Change Armor. It's a uh, coastal landscape architecture design and uh, also a small urban design. Uh, we call it uh, Climate Change Armor because we want to use some landscape strategies to deal with the level rise and the flooding issues. So mimic it as um, Climate Change Armor. And uh, during this time, uh, a lot of my classmates and other friends always ask me, how did I do the Photoshop or do the illustrations uh, in, in that this way? So I was wondering, uh, why don't I record some short videos to share with others? What if other students or other people want to, um, want to know? Uh, and also, in, when I was a student, I also always use YouTube to search uh, how to improve my rendering skills or similar stuff uh, on YouTube. I like so it better upstairs, some famous YouTuber. So then I made my uh, YouTube channel, it's called the Lens Based Architecture. I made this icon because um, this logo is it, it inspired by uh, a spice man. Um, he's holding the last plant on the planet. So I was wondering maybe we landscape designer could do something to save this planet or save the world. Um, so in my uh, Instagram and the YouTube channels, I always share some useful tips uh, for landscape design. For example, the most recent video I show um, how to save our abandoned landscape rendering to in other way by uh, illustrator or um, like make some animations in PowerPoint or in SketchUp. I will show how to use, uh, how to make animations in SketchUp next week with you guys. Um, and uh, today um, I'm going to show how to do the digital collage in Photoshop with you guys. Um, since uh, Professor Nadia already introduced the basic knowledge of collage, I will go through this very fast. Um, I think collage is a basic technique of art creation. It was just used by the pure artist, but later on, a lot of architects and the landscape architects start to use collage to present our draw, draw, draw ideas of um, our design. And also some collage have some view of perspective, but nowadays a lot of modern artists they use the collage in a very flat way instead of uh, have a very accurate perspective. And also, I think the one advantage of collage is that it could show multi layers of atmospheres. This cannot be presented by 3D model. And especially when we want to emphasize one focal point or one like sculptures, we cannot make it uh, very exaccerate um, in the perspective of 3D model, but we can make it uh, very large, enlarge it or ma make it very dramatic in collage. But we don't think it's uh, it out, out of scale because it is a combination of uh, rendering and the uh, artist way. And here are some examples, some like a watercolor vibe or some collage combined with the 3D model. And this is a, another way to use collage. I always teach my students in China how to use collage in, uh, in the beginning of their portfolio, like introduce a story of this site. For example, I made this video. Uh, it's also uploaded in my YouTube channel. Um, this is a site in Boston on the Freedom Trail. So I use the collage way to tell the story of the history of the uh, uh, Freedom Trail. And also I put the map underneath to show the location of the site and the, the length of the Freedom Trail. So it's a combination of uh, uh, site analysis and uh, style, uh, style st storytelling. So I think it's a very efficient way to present the background of the 
our design site. And in the, this, this website, I will share with uh, you guys later by email. So we can download some free brushes and uh, free uh, PNG people and uh, free cutout trees from this website. So um, I'll get start to show how to make a, a very basic clash in Photoshop. So this is a design uh, for a wetland and it is an eco-friendly design. So basic idea is that we design some trails and uh, uh, we preserve some areas for the wetland. So at the beginning, I will draw a very rough sketch underneath. And I collect some and I collect some images from Google uh, and I will put them in layers of the background. So at the beginning, I will put a major background and enlarge it. to fit it into the skyline here. Oh, for the sketch, I make it as a multiply. Therefore, I could put it on the top of the layers as the guideline. And my personal habit is I always like to rasterize all the images I put into the Photoshop. And uh, for this, I will apply a mask on here. And I use arm tool to select the sky because I don't want it. I will put another sky later on and fill in black. This area will be hided. If you have any questions, you can uh, just interrupt me and uh, ask me any times. When we use clutch, um, we always want to put a lot of similar elements together. We don't want to just use one photo like this. It would be very boring and it won't look like clutch. So um, although this photo is also a clutch, but it will prevent, uh, present a different vibe for the overall drawing. So this one I want to uh, put it here. And also I will apply a mask and I use L2, the lasso tool to select the trail part. And the price uh, control and the delete in Windows and uh, option and the delete in Mac to fill the black in the mask. And uh, therefore this area will be hiding. And I want to apply another layer of black. I want to make it this side. And since this photo is very uh, different with others, it's too green. So I will press Ctrl U to adjust the color, to change the color tone of it. Yes. 
same with others, I will apply a layer mask. I press Control M to make it brighten. So therefore, I have a composition of the black diamond, and then um, I will make a new layer called it S. Maybe I don't have to do that. A new layer called grass. So I want to draw some grass at the front of the view. I have some brush tools. Um, I downloaded the gray brushes from uh, the website I list here. Hi, Jojo. Hi. Hi, we have a question here. They're wondering if, how do you keep your rendering file size small while still keeping it high quality? Because that's an uh, issue that they have. Okay. One thing is make your canvas go too big. Like um, keep it in um, A3 or A2 size, do not do it in A1 size. And uh, another thing is when you export, you can make a backup file and then you can merge some layers. Sometimes they have too many layers, like 30 layers or 40 layers. So the file would be very big. So once you can, like, select some major layers and merge them, especially when we have PNG people. So each people is a layer. So they would be very big. If we uh, make the rendering in the end, we can merge all of the PNG people in one layer. That would be save a lot of spaces in your computer. And then you can ex export a smaller size JPG or PNG file. Uh, is that okay? Yes, that's great. Thank you. Okay, cool. So um, go back to grasses. I will choose uh, this grass brush and uh, when we use the brush, make sure we have uh, the spacing on and also make it shape dynamic. Do not too dramatic. Then I will put a wildflower layer above it. So if we have the image like this, it's very hard to cut the flowers or the plant out. So it is easier to draw a other shape of the grass and apply the photo on it like this. So when we want to apply a photo on a shape layer, we put this photo layer above the shape layer and uh, put your mount between those two layers and hold out an option for Mac, out for Windows computer. And then you can see this small arrow down here and try uh, right click 
and it will apply on the safe load. And for this layer, I want to cut the edge off. So for plot, I'm going to make all the edges on the same line. Make it make them on the different levels. So next step, I will put the wood bag above the wetland. So I make a layer called wood bag. So wood bag, I normally, those uh, simple textures, I normally just uh, Google them and uh, copy them directly into Photoshop. Therefore, I, I could save the space for my computer. And uh, I will copy several of them. And in this situation, like mentioned before, the mer merge layers would save a lot of space. And I will make a copy of it and uh, put it on the tray. And the right click is part of it. It is too long to insert it. And uh, this part of it. And same as this one. And I press control and the curve to, to adjust the light of the food bag. And also, I want to add some details of it. So um, I'm going to make a copy of this one and uh, make it darker. I press Control U to change the lightness of it. And uh, just to delete the center of it. Then the wood back would have an edge of it. Uh, similar with this one on the side. 
to make a copy of it by holding out and driving. And I will send the measurements of the one Then we have the Uta. The last part is the, I'm going to add some mountains for the first one. I got this one from Google before. I will put it to the bottom. The delete this part, and also I delete the land part. Okay. I'm going to move them and change the color of it. I press continue. And the last step is the add some stuff. For the flood image, I, I always like to add two or three layers of sky to make it look more, more like flood. For this one, and we don't need it too bright because this is the background. We want to have the bright uh, vivid color of the front and the very light color um, for the background. I just press Ctrl V to paste it in the set itself. Maybe like this. And we create the map. And now we don't need the, the stack layer. I 
then we assume I should as increase. At least one or two trees. Normally, I get the uh, great cutout tree from the uh, from Mr. Cutout. Uh, this one. The first one. So I get some connection. I don't make the trees uh, too bright. And so I want to talk about And this is just my uh, personal preferred to add some um, orange or uh, warm color as a mask. But uh, it's not everyone like that. I just use a brush to to the like very bright orange and make the opacity lower. And uh, normally I will choose a direction of the sun. Um, for this image, I think the sun should come from the top light and to the right bottom. So I put the light here, and maybe here, and uh, maybe somewhere here on the wood bank. And then make it lighter. So the, the image will have a Warm to so not everyone like it, just my personal aesthetic. And then in the last step, add people. I personally think for the rendering like this, the class, the accurate scale is not very important. But um, it's better not be too off. And another trick is that 
for the real perspective drawing, normally the head of the people are on the same level. So if you want to make sure you are on the right scale, you can draw a reference line over here. And make sure to put all the head around this one. At the same time, um, to save how I just uh, randomly put some people. And also, we can have some wildlife or uh, animals like those, you know, small birds. It will make your drawing look better. So for example, let me do something. Let me steal some birds from previous one. And for this step, I just want to make all the people black white. And I want to add a layer mask to curve to above all the layers. And uh, I just want to make the overall drawing brighter. And the last step, um, I'm going to add the sun glare. In the brush setting, you can drag the direction of the brush by this navigation tool. Therefore, we have a some glares from the sky. And if you want, you can have another one. Um, normally, I want I I I'd like to add a very small one on the top of the tree. Mm -hmm. 
feel like the sun can pass through the, uh, the leaf on the tree. Maybe too much. Um, and uh, if you have time, you can add the shadow for these people to make the overall collage more real. And also do a little bit of transparency of these people. Um, and also, if you have other brushes or if you have time, you can add some birds on the sky or uh, other details. Then the, uh, your drawing would be a little more uh, interesting. And another trick is that you can add, add another layer of shrubs. For example, uh, this one. to change the edge of your drawing. Um, I think that's the... I think that's uh, almost the, the drawing step for the summertime. And uh, do you have questions? before I go to the next step. 